The way I want you to think about it is when the spinal cord gets hurt, depending on how significantly it gets hurt, will produce different symptoms. Hi guys, I'm Dr. Dan, I'm a veterinarian, and today we're gonna go over intervertebral disc disease or back problems in the dog. Intervertebral disc disease is incredibly hard to say, I get it, so I'm gonna focus and say a bad back. The causes of a bad back are from the disc material between the actual vertebrae or the backbone. When that disc material either slowly protrudes and compresses the cord, the spinal cord, or if it has a traumatic explosion of material from the disc and damages the spinal cord, both of those will cause back problems. Back problems can range as mild as just back pain and no neurologic problems to severe back issues where the doggy can't even walk. No matter what, if a pet owner believes that their dog has a back issue, they should go to the veterinarian ASAP. Treating a back problem early is super important and can improve the doggy's prognosis for the back and the back legs significantly. The way I want you to think about it is when the spinal cord gets hurt, depending on how significantly it gets hurt, will produce different symptoms. So I'm gonna to touch on a handful of things that a pet owner may notice if there's neurologic damage to the spinal cord. That will include if you have just superficial damage, like the disc material goes up and just compresses the cord a little bit, the pet may lose proprioception function in the back legs. Proprioception is the ability to feel an appendage in space. So being able to touch my nose, knowing that if I grab the table, it's right here. When doggies lose the feeling of proprioception, they may overstep or they may crisscross their feet, or they may roll their feet under and they don't reposition them correctly. When the veterinarian sees lack of proprioception, they may call this ataxia. Ataxia is just a stumbling or a drunken walk. The next level is if the doggy loses motor. So if we just have a gentle damage, we lose proprioception to the spinal cord. If we have more intense compression from the disc material, we may lose function in the back legs. Pretty obvious to most pet owners because their dog is no longer using the back legs. They drag the legs. They can't rise or stand. And if you have even more damage to the spinal cord, you're going to see damage to pain. So veterinarians tend to classify it as superficial and deep. So the more damage you get, the more pain you're gonna lose. In most cases, there's a lot of panic, and for good reason. We need to address this quickly. The veterinarian will try to assess how much nerve damage the dog has experienced in the back legs. The veterinarian will take the feet, and they may turn the toes under, and the doggy repositions them, that's great. We wanna see that. That means proprioception-wise, the doggy knows this guy turned my feet backwards, and I'm going to turn them right side up. If we have proprioception damage, the doggy won't know we're doing that, so they'll just leave them there. And that's how we know we have proprioception damage to the back legs. Other things that a veterinarian may do to kind of get a baseline idea is placing the dog on the ground to see how well we can walk. Are we crisscrossing our feet? Are we overstepping? Are we stumbling and rotating our toes backwards? All of those are also consistent with proprioception damage. The next level is motor function. Do we have motor? Can we walk? So the veterinarian will test that too to see how well the doggy can get around. And the next two is pain. They'll apply different amounts of pressure in different locations to see how painful we are. If we are lacking pain, superficial, or if we're lacking deep pain, this is when things get really darn serious and we need to see a specialist for back surgery. We'll cover that soon. The veterinarian will do a handful of tests now and they're gonna vary a little bit, of course. So the test may include some blood work to see how healthy the dog is. The veterinarian may take an x-ray too. X-rays are not perfect at any length. 
But if you have disc material that has ruptured out into the spinal cord, and that will cause the vertebrae or the bones to slide together a little bit, making it more narrow. This is quite subjective, but it can be beneficial in some cases. The best imaging a veterinarian can do is either a CT or an MRI, and this would be completely based on what the veterinarian would think would be more appropriate. These tests will help assess where and if we have any compression of the actual spinal cord. How are we gonna manage a dog with back issues? It really, really, really depends on the severity of it. If you have a mild case of neurologic damage or spinal cord damage, so let's say the dog is still walking around and but we've lost some proprioception so we can't feel our legs in space, this means we have a superficial damage to the cord. And some veterinarians will pick medical management compared to surgical because of the severity of the damage. If we have significant neurologic damage, meaning we have lost pain, or if the motor is questionable, it is always, always recommended to get a second opinion from a neurologist. A neurologist can give us a lot of information and confidence regarding will, will medicine help fix our problem or will surgery provide a better solution long term. Really, really bad cases where we're lacking pain, surgery is going to be pushed very heavily. On the much more mild cases where we can still walk and play and move around, medicine like, like steroids or anti-inflammatories will probably be encouraged. But no matter which option is picked, rely heavily on your veterinarian and the neurologist to pick the best option for the best long-term solution. After a neurologic spinal cord trauma incident, the dog may stumble a little bit or may not walk perfectly. But as long as the dog is pain-free, can urinate on their own, and can walk, we consider this successful in the veterinary community. I hope this was really helpful, guys. Thank you so much for watching. And if you have any stories you want to share with me regarding your pet and intervertebral disc disease, please let me know. Thanks for watching.